Cal from Cal's Crafts. Welcome back if you've been before. And... Hi, welcome. Um, this is my whip and chat of the week. I am late, and this is Sunday. I usually put it up on a Saturday, but you know, things happen, <laughs> as you know. So, I've got my candle lit for anybody that needs prayers, thoughts, or positivity. I always try and have a candle lit. I've also got my wax burner going because I found this lovely wax melt. And it's bliss. Oh, my God, the smell is divine. So I've been using that every day for a week. So we're still on um, Let the Good Times Roll by Mandy Manzana from Diamond Art Club. Oh, I've got to show you. Oh, you know what it looks like, don't you? I've been doing it long enough. So we're on the last sections. So I'm going to rip both of these off. And then pull it down like that. Can you still see okay? Yeah. And I've got my trays from Shiny Shazza and Diamond Art Club. I've got my Diamond Art Club pen and my one of my friends. So let's get some diamonds out first before we do anything. So we need... Oh, that one's slid there. I roll this one back up and put it back in the box. So sometimes if I haven't pressed hard enough, they might slide ever so slightly, but not much. So it doesn't make any difference, really. Just slide them back into place and off to go again. So should we do that one there, them there and them there? So we want them there, which are these. So we'll get them done first, I think. So nine, three... 938s and we have got some more 938s there so I'll tip them all in yeah so how's everybody's week going have you had a busy week the sun has been shining here on and off all week oh it's been lovely got up to 20 I think the other day in, in the back garden in the shade which is gorgeous I think it's about 14 or 15 out there at the moment it's what 11 o'clock in the morning it's supposed to get a bit warmer and then we're supposed to have I think back to the old rain tonight but that's fine that's bank holiday weather isn't it rain so I don't mind that so hopefully it'll rain tonight and then be brighter again tomorrow so that would that would be the perfect weather wouldn't it so we've got some um sausages from the butchers well we bought bacon but no we didn't we bought um burgers and sausages from the butchers so we had the burgers for lunch yesterday and we're going to have the sausages for lunch today and then of course the old roast chicken for the evening if everybody's up for it so yeah i'm loving this weather we might got the elon valley this afternoon just for a run just to get out of the house and, you know, go somewhere quiet and maybe have a little walk up on the... Well, they'll have a little walk. I'll just sit in the, <laughs> in the car and watch them. But you know what I mean. It's nice to get up on the hills and smell the fresh air, as they say. No townly life up there or stuff like that. And they said they might take the metal detector and go off with this one big hill they might they want to explore with it. So I said, yeah, that's fine. I said, I'll be quite happy in the car. I said, it doesn't bother me. Yeah. I wrote a, I wrote a rough list today of things that I could talk about because my, my mind is like, Bleh. I was up all night last night. Yeah. And the pain levels were through the roof. It just everything was hurting last night, so I took some paracetamol, some, and I took my codeine on top. Still nothing, and that to take the result to my morphine, which I try not to. It did take the edge off it though, so that was something. But I've run out now, so it's like, and it's bank holiday, which is typical. But never mind. Yeah, so I'm a bit dippy doodah today. I did have, I did 
tell a lie, I did fall asleep about half past seven to about, I don't know, quarter past half past eight, something like that. I spent about an hour. Grant said I could stay there, but I said no, it's wasting the day, isn't it? If I try and stay awake today and tonight, then I might sleep well after my live tonight, all being well. Or what, I could sleep in the car when they go for a walk up the hill. So yeah, so let's see what we did in the week. Sunday I went to my sister's-in-law, because um, she'd got my father-in-law down staying. Um a couple of days so we went up took the dog which we always do had a spot of lunch which is lovely we had lasagna what did we have? lasagna roasted new potatoes roasted carrots and um like couscous and stuff like that with it which is really nice and um then we went me grant gail two girls oh we took harvey with him as us because he was staying here for the weekend and we were going to drop him off sunday morning so gail asked us when when could we um what time were we get getting up to hers and i said oh we'll be going up there about i don't know whenever we dropped harvey off and she said oh bring him with you i said oh okay sure she said yeah ask him and you can come up and you can drop him on the way back so he came with us, which he loved. So we all took the took Lily. We we're going to take Lily for the, for a walk, and across the back there, of Gales, there's a neighbour's got a Labrador called Poppy, and all you ever see when you pull up is its little head popping over the over the um, over the wall. So we decided to take Poppy with us as well, and they were really good with each other. To be fair, so we went for. A, slow walk round round the block had a good old chat so i said you know because gail had been up to get derek down from connor's key and he'd been to the hospital for some tests and some a couple of weeks ago but he says they're saying they don't know what's right with, wrong with him because um he looks like a skeleton and he's not eating and if he does eat he's sick and stuff and and we keep saying there's more to this than meets the eye. And he says, no, 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 no. But then he did let slip that the doctor, the only thing the doctor had said that he'd got low level, um, oh, low level lymphoma, lymphoma, is that how you say it? And I said to go, that's cancer, isn't it? Because he's already, he's in remission for leukemia at the moment. And um, she said, yeah, but he says, the doctor says it doesn't, we, the consultant said it doesn't require any treatment and I said that's odd because I know any type um, low level or high level lymphoma needs treatment either radiotherapy or chemotherapy whether it's um, tablets or whatever for the chemo she said well that's what I thought but he's adamant no and he won't let me go in with the to the consultant with him um, so I, I did read up on it because I thought, have I got it wrong? And it says, and it's and I was like, no, I haven't got it wrong because it says it's, I know it's slow growing, isn't it? That's why they call it low grade. Um, but it starts in your, your limbs and it can, well, you, it can start in your, it starts in your blood and then it goes to your, uh, your lymph, you know, you, oh, you know what I mean. And then it can spread. But he's adamant, no. So I don't know. I just, I said to Gail, I said, whether he's refused treatment because he's 84, which I can't blame him, and he's lost his wife, and he's on his own, and he's lonely. I said, I don't know, but we just have to, we keep trying to push him on the subject, but he just shuts down, so he's only going to tell us what he wants us to know, and that's it. But, you know, we can't do any more. But it was nice seeing him. So we're going to try and... Gail's going to get him down to hers because she's sort of the halfway mark. The dad lives like... Um, what does he live? About three and a half hours, four hours away. So, um, yeah. No, it's got to be three hours away. 
yeah just over three hours away so she has him and she's got the room to have him at hers well we don't we haven't got anything he can have his own bedroom and ensuite things because she's got is it a four bedroomed house and two of the bedrooms are en suite plus we've got the bathroom and stuff on top of that so she has him there so I said yeah we'll, we'll keep going back and forth back and forth to them so when we left there we dropped Harvey off and I'd already given him an easter egg and he was over the moon he couldn't believe I'd bought him an easter egg and of course when we got to Gail she bought him a little easter egg as well so you could see when we dropped him off, he was like, oh, I don't want to go home. <laughs> so I think he'll be back down before long. Bless him. He's a lovely lad, though. He said to me, the after he said, oh, you've got such a nice family. He said, I said, I said, we're not a bad bunch. Not many of us, but we're not a bad bunch. Yeah, Millsy went for an interview for a job on Tuesday well a trial shift she's applied for loads bless her half of them didn't even bother to reply to her but she got um, a trial shift at uh, the Lanark Inn waitress inn so she went for two hours and they said yep she got the job so she starts they said they're not going to throw her in the deep end over the bank holiday she can start Tuesday, so she's going to do Tuesday dinner time, Thursday evening till 9, I think it is, 6 till 9. I think there's three hour shifts, and then Saturday and a Sunday dinner time. So she said, oh, what happens if I can't do it? Well, if you can't do it, you can't do it. I said, but you've got to keep trying. You've got to keep trying at these things. So she's worked out that if she can do this, that she'll be able to afford to, to have pay for her own driving lessons and still have some money on the side so it might give her an incentive to sort of try and stick at it so I think once she sticks at it she'll get used to it because just you know just getting out of her comfort zone isn't it and then she was worried about seeing her other half because usually it's a Tuesday and a Thursday that she gets to see her boyfriend and I said look and she said, I've been working every Saturday and Sunday. I said, I know. I said, but there's evenings and things. I said, we will, you can go after school and then I can pick him up or you can come here after school. I said, and I'll take him home. She said, would you do that? I said, yes, I would do that. I said, you know. So she was happy about that. So I took her down Wednesday to see him. I took her down, I think it was for took her down for 11 that's it and I was picking her up at 5 because he had work at 6 now he lives about 40-45 minutes away from us which is no problem so I said when we went to pick him up I said to Jess you're going to come she said yeah I'll come for the run and we always take the dog oh my god a journey from hell absolute journey from hell wouldn't believe it honestly oh I wanted to do that was outside there then freaked me out we um Got to the next town, which is about 10 mile away. Signs. This road is closed due to a serious accident. So a diverted, diversion signs hadn't gone up or anything, but I knew the back road, so off we go. Thought this will be all right. How wrong was I? There's loads of like bridges from the one road to the other road. Every one of those was blocked off by police. You couldn't go down them. And then the place where it was we had to divert there's a bridge there and I stopped and talked to the police and said no you'll have to go the really narrow back road to Bothwood oh my god we ended up all the cars at standstill because there was cars coming towards us us going there not many um, passing places the road was just big enough then for one car it, a journey that usually takes me 45 minutes took me, how long did it take me to get there? I think it was an hour and 20 minutes to get there. And then, so I said on the way back, we'll go a different route, we'll go, I knew it would take us an hour, but I said at least it's an hour of driving and I know we'll get home. 
So I took us across country to and came home that way. It was like, really? But they only needed, if they'd used their common bloody sense, they only needed to close one part of the road and one of the bridges because we knew where, we found out where the accident was, but now they decided to close the whole of the road. Absolute nightmare. But hey, yeah, as I said, it was an adventure, if, not, if nothing else, and we got to see some of the roads, especially Jess had not see, ever seen before, in beautiful countryside. The dog didn't like it though. Oh my God. I don't know whether they sense or what it was, but we went off the main road onto this country road and she did nothing but cry and cry and cry and cry and cry and cry. You know that pitiful cry they do. And as soon as we got onto the back onto the main road, stopped, instantly stopped. I don't know whether she thought we weren't going to get Millie or what, I don't know, but she didn't like being on these back roads. She wanted to be on the road that she was familiar with. Yeah, she's quite sensitive, I think. So that was a bit of excitement on Tuesday, if nothing else. <laughs> and then, oh, that's it. that was Wednesday. So Tuesday, Grant phoned me Tuesday morning in Athos Day to say, he said, oh, you never guess what. I said, what? He said, I've um, tested positive for COVID. I said, you're joking. He said, nope. He said, I felt a bit, un sort of, well, not unwell, he said, but a bit, I don't know. He said, but I don't know what it was this morning. He said, I thought, oh, just felt a bit strange. So I said, how do you feel now? He said, I don't feel too good. He said, but because I work in my workshop and the ruling is now, if you're okay, you have to stay in work. Um, and his workshop is away from everybody. Nobody goes in there except him. But an hour later, he said, i got to come over. He said, I feel really rough. So I said, right, you're going to have to go in isolate you. Because I said, I don't want nothing. The girls don't want anything. He said, well, you better take tests as well. Because we took tests, but we were all clear. Um, so I isolated him. And then um, took his to go him to take his temperature. It was 39. No, it was 37.9 when he came home. That was right. And I said, oh, your temperature's not too bad. Bloody hell, within two hours, it had gone up to 39.5, 39.7. Then it went up to 40, 40.1. And I was thinking, oh, shit. Um, and it was like that for about 12 hours, up and down a little bit. So I got took all the covers off. He said, I want covers on cold. I said, I don't care. You're not having any on you. And then... By the following morning, he felt, well, he said, I felt like really good. Um, I said, are you joking? He said, no. He said, if that's it, he said, I said, I feel really good. I said, oh, I don't know. He said, oh, I'll go back to work tomorrow. He said, because I, I feel fine. You know, I feel like I've, you know, achy, a little bit achy, but, you know, nothing else. So I said, all right. So he went back to work on Thursday. He was isolating in his um, workshop. <laughs> I said, well, how did you make, manage cups of tea? He said, Adam was bringing them and just leaving them at the door, knocking and then going. So, um, and then he knew he'd got Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday off because it's the bank holiday weekend. But um, he came home Thursday night and he did go down the old bit. He, he sort of had a temperature, only about 37 and 8, something like that, on and off. And achy, but he's got the fatigue and sickness. That's hit him yesterday and today. So, um, he just can't, which is unlike him, and he's getting in a fret because he, he doesn't like to be doing nothing. And um, he just can't, he can't do anything. Every, you know, he, like he walked up the stairs, back up the stairs this morning to go and have a shower. He'd come down, made a cup of tea and whatever, and then went back up. He was exhausted by the time he got to the top of the stairs. And Grant's really fit, do you know what I mean? Mm. But uh, I said to him, so we did another test this morning on him and he's still positive. So we're all still negative. 
I haven't done one today, I've got to do mine after, but we were all negative on Friday. But I haven't been anywhere or done anything. Anyway. Um, oh yeah, I'll show you because I'm going to have a sip of it. Look what's come. Oh, oh, my new mug has come. Shit, that's hot. I don't know if I can. I'll try and turn it for you. I'm going to bring the camera down. Can you see it says cows or crafts? But look at the colours of that. Yeah, I got this on Etsy from a lady called YVZ Creations. She's lovely, Yvonne. Um, I saw her make this mug. As I said to you before, I saw her... Um, i just got an awful feeling I've been putting these on the wrong one. Not so sharp like. I have been putting these on the wrong one. Oh well. I'm not going to pull them all off. I'll just slide what I got over to there. Told you. Not with it at all. Just be extra shredding, will it? <laughs> It'll just be a bit of extra shading. It don't matter, does it? I don't care. I don't care. It'll be unique on it. It's only the the other one just slightly darker. I'm such a plonker, aren't I? Yeah, so I got that from Y V Y Y V Z Creations, Yvonne. As I say, I picked the colours, I saw her make the, the, the pattern, everything, before it went on the turner to dry, and then I saw it being epoxied, the first coat, I didn't see the, the second and everything, or putting the name on, because I wasn't very well at the time, but yeah, so I want to get a smaller version of that now as well, so I'm going to have to ask her to get some smaller cups in to do. So I think I might ask her to get me something like that for my birthday. But yeah, there's that. Um, trying to think what else. Oh, Jacqueline's been a bit under the weather this week. Had to call a district nurse. They think her aunt, she's been terribly sick. And if she's sick, she can aspirate. So it's been quite scary this week. Um, so they have changed her medication yet again. She's back on the antibiotics. She's only been off in, what, four days, I think? Um, and she's back on them again. So just a waiting game. She was a little bit better yesterday. She did keep some of her food and drink down yesterday. So it's literally the minimum amount she needs at the moment to be okay if you know what I mean so yeah but she's well looked after they don't know what to do with her leg um, they think now if the doctor said because her spine's curved and um, her leg goes over he said I just think now it's just her comfortable position 
the trouble is if they try and move it she helps out because it's painful to move so but like he said if it makes her comfortable he said I can't see the point of you know doing all this physio on her at this stage of it, of it all which is going to be painful and uncomfortable for her and he said why put her through more when she's going through enough already uh, I have to agree you know mum's the same she was up yesterday she had a good day yesterday she actually got her up in the chair and they said she was kicking her leg she's got this thing where she kicks her legs back and forth and if she's in the chair she'll kick them up in the air for some reason nobody knows why um she wasn't a da didn't wasn't a dancer or anything like that did she do you know what i mean i can't say she's resorted back to that but they said yesterday they said they wish they could kick their legs up that bloody eye yeah but she's all right she's well looked after as i say she was up in the day room yesterday so she was quite content up there watching the people go by as they say but dad's gone to me auntie mark's for easter he went yesterday morning which i'm so glad he's gone down to me auntie mark for a few i think he said he might come back tuesday it'll do him the good world of good it's a bit of company for her as well because she's on her own now and uh, so he'll spend a bit of time down there, Auntie Margs. And then there's, I think they go, he'll probably travel over to the, she's in Swindon, so I think they're gonna, maybe they'll travel around and see my cousins and stuff. And they, so that'd be nice for him. Doggy barking up the road. Oh yeah, I went to um, Diamond Art Club. Oh god, I saw that um, Fire Dragon by Anne Stokes. Oh, it is lush. It's a seventy by ninety. It's square, which I don't mind doing squares. 52 colours though, I was like, whoa, 52 colours, 5 ABs, so it's going to be stunning, it's a dark picture, but it's stunning, and it's 98,889 diamonds in it, I love that Diamond Art Club put the, the amount of diamonds that are in your picture, and it's £82, yeah, that's where the problem lies, that's two weeks of my money well just over two weeks of my money so yeah it's gonna have to stay there for a, while, a long while and then i saw um nine lives that's out of stock at the moment um that's by christopher lovell i think that's i think that's his name that was a 70 by 90 so slightly bigger Hundred eight thousand five hundred and eighty four diamonds um i think yeah that was a square 35 colors four ab's but that's really nice as well totally different type of picture that i normally do but it really really appealed to me and then the other one i think i think i might have said last week i can't remember is the just breathe one by um dawn gallier is it it's only um, 43 by 43, so it's not awfully big. And 10 colours, 2 ABs, and it says one special drill, whatever that, whatever that may be, I don't know. Um, and it's around, but it's just, you know, when you just see something and you can relate and you need to, I think I need to have that in my, oh, that's a bit broken, in my workspace to remember sometimes you just go, you know that just that just that deep breath and just think right you know but yeah i think that one was 36 so i might be able to save up and get that one but yeah there's oh there's some beautiful ones on there i like looking there's nothing wrong with window shopping is there and i've got plenty in you know in um in my little stash i've probably got about five or six diamond art clubs in my stash and maybe 
and plus other diamond paintings from different companies so you know I've got more than enough to keep me going for a while so yeah so I think this might be finished next week um, and then we'll have to decide what next one we're going to be doing which I think is going to be the, the hard decision to make isn't it oh hang on just get myself comfortable again but yeah so I don't know I'm not sure it's got quite a few that I really want to do but it's deciding which one's going to go to the top of the list I might do a little poll or something you know get two or three out and then have a look and then put them up and let you lot decide which one I do next which would be fun I think oh Millie's been helping with the house and trying to sort things and tidy things up a bit more. Got Jessie to actually finally sort through all her stuff that she pulled out of her bedroom when we did the flooring and everything in her bed of what she wants to keep and what she wants to donate to charity. So she's done that because they were off this last week and next week. So I so said we can get some sorting out done. And do that. So, did anything uh, get delivered by the Easter Bunny for you? I had, as usual, <laughs> I've always had zilch. <gasps> I went to Tesco's to get because I got the girls something. I sent Joshy and Vicky some money, and um, I thought, shit, I haven't got one. I've always bought him one. So, we went in, yes. No, Friday. Yeah, I went in Friday and the shelves were empty. And I thought, bloody hell, have they taken them all off or what? And they said, nope. They just flew out in the last sort of 24, 36 hours. They said they just cleared the shelves. So there was no Easter egg anywhere. So I bought him a Ferrero Rocher because that's his favourite chockies of all time. But he's too little <laughs> to eat them at the moment. And the girls have got theirs. I think they're crunchies, I think, crunchy ones, Cadbury crunchy eggs, I think they are. They're up in the bedroom, but I think they might have forgotten about them because they chose them. So I don't know if they remember or not that they're up there. Yeah, so I'll show you what I've been making. I made... um. Well, I've been making some customs that some somebody asked me to make. I'll show you now. Um, where's that one? I should put that over there a minute. I was asked to make these, and um, one was in sunflower. It was eight and a half by six and a half, eight and a half by six and a half with a handle. But that one has got a little bit off center there, and then yeah, I did a five inch base instead of a four inch base I mean the rest of it's fine and there's nothing the handle won't come free because it's well stitched in but it's slightly longer handle than normal so I had to remake that one <coughs> which I did and then I did the same on this one because I cut them both out at the same time the handle is in the right place there I'd made it too long and five inch handle so I've redone them so I don't know whether to put these on to sell or what to do I probably will but I love them I love these materials but yeah so I'll put that as a second I think or something like that and then this is the other one that I got commissioned to do this is huge I can't even get it all in picture it is 19 long by I think it's 13 or 13 and a half with um, four inch yeah four inch base and it's got bump um lining um with um in between the lining and the outside fabric some bump 
I've got the calico lining inside and pink zip and the handles are on the top and this bag will hold three kits like that I put three of these bags of kits in in here and did the zip up so I thought if anybody would like this massive bag I would have a giveaway today and somebody can have this it has got I mean it's not perfect because it's my prototype one nobody wants it I will keep it and I will use it it has got a little tiny mark there on the fabric but apart from that it is perfect and it's like a flowery pinky flowery so if anybody would like this bag I'll give a giveaway just put um love the bag or would like the bag something with bag in it down below and then I will just randomly pick put you all in a hat and pick one of you if there's more than one and if nobody wants it then I'll keep it so I'll, I'll leave it probably for a week and probably next Sunday I'll have a look and then pick somebody if they want them then this is what I'm doing at the moment excuse my arm and my head going over I'll show you I'm making some more so I'm making some mini face pads I love these these are so soft they're bamboo one side cotton toweling on the other side and I'm going to be selling these in my shop reusable face pads this is the I've decided this is a lovely version of them. I might do them with toweling and cotton again, I don't know, but I love these. So I did them last night. And then I've got some another size, which is um, cotton one side. It'll be towel, cotton toweling, 100% cotton toweling on the other side that are going in the shop. So I've started them. I've got them to do, all them to do. And then I've got a few more of the... Um, kitchen towel ones that I'm going to be doing today so that's my job after but yeah I love these these are going to are so cute and they are so good for getting your makeup off for putting even like I just put like um a little bit of um what's it called face cleanser stuff on there and just use that to cleanse my face one side and then the other side I use I rinse it and then use the other side to just softly wipe any residue off my face love them the girls absolutely love them plus they love the cotton ones I've done as well so I've got a nice um like a drawer in my I've got a stack of drawer things in my on my kit you know, bathroom window the, all the ones prototypes I did before and some of those and I've got to admit I love them all I don't mind which ones I use they're all so lovely but let me know in the comments what you think i'm loving doing thinking of trying to think of reusable items because apart from I, I like my project bags but i like to do these reusable things as well especially with everything going up and i'm trying to find things to do to use all my product because i don't want to be chucking out bits of fabrics if i can find a use and and, and make things with it but yeah, let me know. So I'm going to love you and leave you because I'm getting really tired. Oh, that was the other thing I was going to tell you. Grant has got a craft fair in Hereford on the 30th of April down on the left bank. So if anybody's near Hereford on the 30th of April, we, I'm going to be down there as well at some point. He's got a craft fair, so he'll be selling all his stuff. So let me know. So I'm going to love you and leave you because somebody's at the door. Take care and stay safe. Bye.